Well, good morning. Welcome to the June 2014 uh, ACIP. Um, we'll mention this a little bit later, but uh, keep in mind that we are now at uh, or about our 50th anniversary of ACIP. Uh, so. Uh, many thanks to all, everybody who has preceded us. I'm going to turn the microphone over to Dr. Pickering for some uh, uh, statements here. Thank you, John. Some of us aren't even that old yet, which is amazing. This is going to be an enjoyable meeting, so everyone can lighten up and we can have a great time. So, uh, Good morning and welcome to the uh, <clears throat> June 2014 ACIP meeting. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, the proceedings of this meeting, as past meetings, uh, will be accessible to people not in attendance via the World Wide Web. Uh, welcome to the thousands of people who can't attend ACIP. Uh, we're happy to have you listening and watching. Several people will be with us for the duration of this meeting. Uh, Stephanie Thomas, Natalie Green, <coughs> Reed Walton, and Chris Carraway um, uh, will be helping with the slides uh, during the course of the meeting. We have a full agenda today and tomorrow. We will adjourn at approximately 6 o'clock today uh, and approximately 1.30 p.m. tomorrow afternoon, which is about the time the USA plays Germany in the World Cup. John, remember that? And, and I'll just mention that we will be open for anyone who is following on uh, their uh, cell device to give us updates on score. So. Yeah. Um, uh, handouts of slides to be presented have been distributed to all of the ACIP members and copies are on the uh, tables outside the doors. Um, slides presented at this meeting will be available on the ACIP website in about two weeks uh, after they undergo compliance. Uh, handouts of slides to be presented uh, have been distributed as I stated. Uh, the live webcast uh, will be available on the ACIP website within four weeks. And then minutes of the meeting also are posted. The last meeting was 150 single space page minutes. It's a great reading opportunity. Uh, they are now posted and we try to get those up within 90 days. Uh, members of the press who are interested um, in conducting interviews with ACIP members uh, should contact uh, Jamelia Howard-Jones or Jason McDonald for assistance. And I don't know if Jamelia or Jason are here. If they are, stick up your hands. If not, um, Stephanie or Reed can help you find them during the course of the meeting. Um, at this time, we want to express our sincerely and sincere appreciation to um, three ACIP members who are uh, leaving the committee after their four years of tenure. Uh, Renee Jenkins, uh, Tamara Coyne Beasley, and Jeff Dushin uh, will be rotating off the committee. It seems like yesterday that you joined us. Um, and y y we want to recognize you for the time and effort that all of you have put into uh, the committee activities. Um, you've been here for a very uh, transformative time in ACIP, um, and we really appreciate your, your, uh, your dedication and, and uh, work. And John's going to do further recognition for each of you. Uh, thank you, Larry. If I can have the next slide. I uh, would like to first start out uh, by uh, recognizing uh, the passing of Ciro de Quadros. Uh, uh, quotation up there, medicine, sanitation, nutrition, education, all are necessary uh, and integrated components of preventing and curing sickness, but there is one tool that stands out the most effective, vaccines. Every child, no matter where he or she is born, has the fundamental right to vaccines. Uh, Ciro passed away uh, in May of this year, May 28th, of pancreatic cancer. Uh, he was essential in efforts to eradicate uh, smallpox, uh, polio, and measles across the Americas. Uh, his work was valuable in the Pan American Health Organization. Uh, and he served as the director of PAHO, as well as executive vice president of the Sa uh, Sabin Vaccine Institute and the director of Sabin's uh, Vaccine uh, Advocacy and Education Program. And I think uh, due to his work, uh, we also have uh, uh, sponsorship through PAHO and Sabin for uh, a contingent of uh, vaccine experts from Mexico here with us today. I think uh, Dr. Pickering will introduce him in, in a little bit. But uh, just uh, uh, our uh, condolences to his wife, Susan, and his two daughters, and recognition for uh, an incredible body of work. Uh, next slide. Uh, going back four years, if I can have the next slide. So 
Uh, Tamara Coyne Beasley, uh, Associate Professor, Department of Pediatrics uh, and Department of Internal Medicine. Uh, so uh, trained uh, in both areas at, and she's at the University of North Carolina. Also a senior fellow for the Center of Prevention of School Violence uh, and works with the North Carolina Department of Juvenile Justice and Delinquency Pre Prevention. Uh, Tamara has served as the chair of the Adult Immunization Working Group. And again, my apology for you for uh, putting off your group's uh, uh, presentation last meeting due to vigorous discussion on uh, Prevenor 13. Um, also, uh, very active with the Measles, Mumps, Rubella Working Group, Influenza, and HPV. Uh, and has also been very instrumental with the National Adult Immunization Summit. A uh, couple of things that uh, I, I always like to kind of look back through, and the first uh, publication I could find from Tamara, uh, going back to uh, 1999, Epidemiology of Adolescent Homicide in North Carolina from 1990 through 95, an archivist of pediatric and adolescent medicine. Also, the African American Church, a potential forum for adolescent comprehensive sexuality education back in 2000, spanning all the way to uh, now in 2014, vaccine intervention effects from social marketing campaign to pro promote HPV vaccination and preteen boys. What you might not know about Tamara, she also is a published poet uh, uh, back in uh, 1995 and 1997 and winning a National Library of Poetry Excellent Award. So uh, with your extra time rotating off uh, ASAP, uh, we hope you find more time for that as well. Uh, next slide. Uh, Jeff Dushan, um, who is Chief of uh, Communicable Disease, Control Epidemiology and the Immunization Section, uh, Public Health, Seattle, and King County. So that's uh, Washington State. So uh, if nothing else, uh, Jeff is awake here and with us, and I think it is about uh, 5 a.m. your time. Um, and he's been up for two hours, so just keep that in mind and be nice to him. Uh, he's also Associate Professor of Medicine uh, in the Division of Allergy and Infectious Disease at the University of Washington. Um, one of his uh, quotes is, um, you didn't know this was coming, but the great process makes me a low quality judge of the importance of my contributions. And quotation. Uh, Jeff has served uh, as chair of the ACIP Zoster Work Group, uh, the chair of the ACIP General Rex Work Group, and then members of uh, Influenza and Pneumococcal, and also chaired the Febrile Seizure Work Group uh, uh, to assess febrile seizures associated with uh, uh, influenza vaccine and uh, pneumococcal vaccine for the 2009-10 season. Uh, he's also served as the uh, uh, liaison from Nacho, from, uh, or Nacho, is that correct? Uh, from uh, 2006 through 2010, uh, and also their uh, chair of the immunization work group. And uh, uh, Jeff has just been appointed uh, as a member of the National Quality uh, Forum uh, and the Adult Immunization Steering Committee. Uh, so that's just come on. And also uh, Public Health uh, Committee for IDSA. Uh, and Jeff has been uh, very active uh, with all sorts of things, uh, going back, I think, to your days as an EIS officer uh, investigating hantavirus pulmonary syndrome and uh, multidrug resistant staph pneumonia. Uh, both published in 94 and 95, and all the way up to use of electronic ambulatory uh, care data for influenza-like surveillance in Washington State that was just out last year. Uh, and a uh, uh, picture uh, on the upper right there of Jeff up on a, uh, a high altitude in Hawaii, the only person I know uh, ever who's become hypothermic in Hawaii, uh, but got caught uh, while biking at 9,000 feet in a bit of a storm and had to uh, seek aid at a ranger station but he's with us and has survived, so. Uh, Jeff is an avid biker, and uh, uh, over the years, uh, he's a person who is up at three in the morning exercising sometimes. Uh, I don't quite understand it, but <laughs> good luck to you, Jeff. Um, and then next slide, please. Uh, finally, uh, uh, last but not least, Renee Jenkins, uh, professor and chair emeritus uh, Department of Pediatrics and Child Health at Howard University College of Medicine, and served as the chair of the Harmonized uh, Childhood uh, Schedule Work Group, uh, and also uh, part of the HPV 
uh, and has also represented ACIP at NVAC meetings. Um, if you look at her resume, she has been part of just about every committee uh, in the American Academy of Pediatrics um, over time. And if you look uh, also, she served on virtually everything in the Society for Adolescent Medicine, or the former Society for Adolescent Medicine, which has now changed its name a little bit, and I don't remember what it is, so forgive me, Amy. <laughs> that, that's okay. Yeah, S-A-H-M. So, um, and she has written about adolescent hypertension uh, going back to 1975, all the way to health, what? <laughs> all, all the way to health disparities across the lifespan uh, published in, uh, where are the children published in JAMA in 2009. Things that you need to know about Renee is, and I, I actually know Renee by word of mouth first from one of my colleagues who have worked very closely with at Wisconsin, but Renee has done virtually everything, but serving as the first African American president of the Society of Adolescent Medicine in 1989, and as the, uh, uh, I think the first African American uh, as president of the American Academy of Pediatrics in 2007, and has also been elected to the Institute of Medicine. So we, we stand in, in great honor of having Renee here uh, for the last four years. So for, we have uh, certificates for your participation uh, and a letter from Dr. Frieden for, uh, that we will pass around. Uh, but again, thanks uh, to all of you for your service. We appreciate it greatly. And if there are any comments from any or all three of you, that would be very wonderful right now. Dr. Coyne Beasley. So we'll go in alphabetical order. I hate that picture, just want to. <laughs> Uh, I really have to say that it's been really one of life's greatest pleasures and privileges uh, to be a part and to be able to serve on the ACIP. And I'm really so grateful for the opportunity, which includes the opportunity to work in, with each and every one of you, my ACIP colleagues, the CDC leaders and staff, the liaisons, those of you who are in the audience who share your wisdom and experiences with us, such as Dr. Plotkin and also uh, Frankie Milley, who actually is the parent of Ryan and who also shares with us her pain and her experiences and has turned that into a movement that supports uh, vaccination. And I'd also like to say that, I, oh, you can change that slide or take it off. <laughs> oh, I really have never been so remorseful about rotating off a committee, uh, particularly one that required so much work and so much time and so much energy. But I can say that what we do is so important and that when do you have the opportunity to deliberate extensively and do evidence-based recommendations and actually have them translated into policy and practice within a matter of months or certainly within the year. So I'm really grateful to everyone who's been here and hope that I have been able to contribute in some, some small way and look forward to collaborating with you. And then just two more final things is I'd really like to um, express my sincere appreciation to my nominator. I'm not sure I'm supposed to say his name, but he was a former ACIP chair. He actually also was the uh, chair of pedi uh, pediatrics at Duke when I was there and also had something to do with the measles vaccine. <laughs> I am eternally grateful for his support and his confidence in me. And then also one of the greatest joys is be, to be able to serve with one of my most invaluable and special mentors, Dr. Renee Jenkins. So thank you very much. I thought we would go counterclockwise. Okay, so um, 
uh, from your position, it really doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, it was a great honor and a pleasure to serve with such um, a, a great group of colleagues. And I've learned a lot from this experience. Um, I, I look at myself on the top of Haleakala and I ask the same question uh, that I'm asking myself now, where do you go from here? Unfortunately, from Haleakala, you can only go down. And I'm hoping that's not the, not the same uh, is true after this experience. I want to um, thank my uh, great colleagues on the um, CDC work group who helped us uh, accomplish so much during my four years here, in particular the uh, designated federal officers, uh, Andrew Kroger from General Rex, and um, Craig Hales and Raphael Harpaz from uh, Zoster Work Group, and um, the outstanding folks um, on influenza, Lisa Grosskopf and um, Tamara Pilishvili from a new Macaulay work group. They they make it possible for us to accomplish um, what we what we did, and they're, they're outstanding in their dedication, their professionalism, and their intelligence. It's it's a that was a great pleasure to uh, be able to work with those colleagues as well. And I want to thank all of you who um, participated in the working groups that I was on for your contributions, and um, particularly some who aren't here today who joined us for the federal seizure work group, Neil Halsey and others. That was extremely valuable. Um, it was a great honor to be here during the time that Dr. Pickering characterized as transformative, uh, making explicit the evidence base on which we make our recommendations. I think that's outstanding and, and moving us in a very good direction. And I was also very impressed by the increasing um, sophistication and, um, and um, uh, capacity of our um, vaccine safety program. Um, the Immunization Safety Division has been out outstanding having their contributions as well to help us through the issues around um, febrile seizures in particular and, and the other um, ongoing monitoring that they're doing. So uh, thank you all. It's been a pleasure, and I look forward to continuing to, uh, to contribute to the extent possible in the future. You can change that, too. Okay. <laughs> It's always tough to go last, um, um, just like the others of, who are rotating off. It's been an awesome uh, experience and responsibility that when you make decisions here, I mean, they hold. And I think that really um, is a heavy weight to, you know, bring to the table, but it just really gives you uh, a, a sense of how Im important it is to get it done right. And there are so many people that contribute to that that, that we have to be uh, appreciative of. Um, I came along, as unfortunately you gave years, uh, at a time when as adolescent people we gave one vaccine, TD, that was it, um, to now, <laughs> which is so complicated. And then the experience of the academy where Anne and I became a lot more uh, connected by the challenges, I came along with the Jenny McCarthy uh, sort of movement, and that was incredibly challenging. And I had Joe Bacchini on speed dial because there were so many questions that needed to be answered. So. Um, this has been quite a transition for me, but um, I've learned a lot. I uh, appreciate all the people that really contribute. I want to give a shout out to Cody Meisner, who was my uh, ACIP buddy who oriented me. And uh, um, the other part of this that is evolving, which I'll be uh, interested in watching, is the issue related to cost and, and how now ACIP does have to figure out how we're going to address that. The resources we have are not endless, and we have to figure out how to best use them. And I think at one point it was just the science and the safety and those issues, but now it is also part of the equation. Um, and I congratulate uh, John for being such a, uh, a fearless leader uh, to go do all that digging <laughs> around to uh, know your team, um, and we'll miss you, and i uh, see you in Wisconsin. <laughs> Uh, thank you very much, uh, and, and again, thanks to the, the, the June meeting is always the hard meeting when we have to say goodbye to uh, people we've gotten to know um, over the last, uh, I guess, four years, and it, it goes by quickly. Um, speaking of uh, going back, uh, 50 years ago, next slide. Um, this is the agenda from the very first ACIP meeting held uh, in May 25th. Uh, please note that we had a start time of 9.30 at that time. Um, and next. Um, one of the agenda items, uh, well, a couple of agenda, one was the simplification of the vaccine schedule back in uh, 1964. But the other is uh, 
an agenda item looking at uh, the uh, formation of, uh, from time to, uh, it would be desirable from time to time to call upon appropriate uh, technical consultants, uh, and this is the formation of the ACIP work group. Uh, so that goes all the way back to two, or, uh, 1964. Next slide. Uh, I'd like to just point out back in 1964 when they were talking about the simplification of the schedule, there were seven vaccines uh, in use then. Uh, and a uh, very nice timeline uh, from the CDC website, but uh, showing if you hit the button again, uh, the formation of the uh, ACIP uh, at that point in 1964. Next slide. Um, just going back very quickly, 77 years ago, I only put this up as a historic reference, in particular uh, with a nod to the, the March of Dimes. But uh, recently there was released a wonderful YouTube video showing uh, FDR going to the All-Star uh, game in uh, 1937, and just the logistics needed to get uh, a gentleman with polio uh, from his vehicle to the stands where he was. Uh, th this counters the uh, myth that FDR uh, tried to avoid being seen in public uh, with his polio, but it also underscores the uh, important need across the world to eliminate polio. Uh, and for those who are baseball fans, if you look at this video, Lou Gehrig, Jimmy Fox, uh, Hank Greenberg, and Dizzy Dean are all in this video as well. Uh, next slide. I'm going to just finish off uh, with something from William Carlos Williams, and I'm just going to let this uh, sit up here for a couple minutes. Uh, William Carlos Williams was a general practitioner, a family doctor in Rutherford, New Jersey, dealing primarily with immigrant families who were very poor. And uh, this, he, he actually won the Pulitzer Prize uh, posthumously uh, uh, for his writing but is one of the very first uh, American physician authors out there, both a poet and uh, an essayist. But this is just a uh, uh, piece, and actually this is his first published piece uh, uh, dealing with an infant with meningitis. And I'll just leave it up here for uh, a couple moments. And the next. And then the last slide. I put this up uh, simply, uh, this is from 1920, so uh, 94 years ago. But for a uh, community physician back in 1920, um, the, the thing about this writing is it's so uh, matter of fact. Uh, and this is something that he dealt with all the time. And the fact that infants and, and young people died of meningitis uh, was so commonplace that the writing was almost uh, banal. Uh, it was just so common. This is horrific and uh, something that we rarely see anymore due to the benefit of all the things that Sarah DeQuandris uh, talked about, uh, sanitation, education, uh, good medical care, but especially vaccines. So uh, with that, uh, we'll call. Uh, oh, oh, actually, we won't call. We'll, we'll call Dr. Pickering to finish our uh, opening.
Yeah, thanks, John. I think for many of us in the room who lived through the H flu era before the vaccines were available, this is a, a very sad memory, but a very happy times now that we can prevent most of these diseases. It was, it was horrible. Um, nearly every meeting, uh, we've delegates from the WHO Pan American Health Organization, PAHO. Um, they come in early yesterday. They spent all day uh, in sessions and uh, interacting with uh, folks here at CDC. Um, at this meeting, we welcome delegates from Mexico's Ministry of Health. Um, as your name is called, please stand so that you can be recognized. And uh, if there's anything any of us can do during the course of the meeting, uh, please, please call on us. Dr. Jose de Jesus Mendez is the Infant Health Subdirector for Me Mexico's National Center for Child and Adolescent Health. Uh, also representing that organization are two medical supervisors, Dr. Amelia Kane and Paulina Saldana. Good to be here. Um, uh, Dr. Armando Gonzalez is the Division Director of Prevention and Disease Detection in the Mexican uh, Institute of Social Security. And we're also pleased to welcome um, from another organization, Marla Dalton, who is the Executive Director of uh, NFID, National Foundation for Infectious Diseases. So Marla, welcome. So it's welcome to all of you. Hopefully you'll have a, a very productive and uh, educational two days here with us. As a reminder for future international visitors who plan to attend ACIP meetings, uh, due to changes in the um, Department of Homeland Security's Security Policy, Additional forms are required for each meeting um, and an when an international guest registers. It's critical that international visitors complete and submit these forms as soon as possible following registration. Uh, Stephanie Thomas, our ACIP committee management specialist, uh, will be able and has helped many international visitors. And if there are any questions uh, on concerns about the process, let Stephanie know and we'll, we'll get them worked out. But the major issues, uh, try to get registered uh, as soon as possible. Uh, the next ACIP meeting will convene on Wednesday and Thursday, October 29th and 30th, at which time we will welcome our uh, three new members. Um, registration for all meeting attendees is required and will be open uh, next week on the ACIP website. So it's good to get registered early um, and you don't have to worry about it. Uh, registration date deadline for U.S. citizens uh, is um, October 13th and for non-U.S. citizens is uh, Monday, October 6th. Um, Liaison representatives, David Johnson is joining us as liaison representative for Pharmaceutical Research and Manufacturers uh, Association of America. David, where are you? Over here. Over here. Good. Good to see you again. Um, <clears throat> uh, Margaret Savoy will be serving for this meeting as liaison <clears throat> representatives for the American Academy of Family Physicians in place of James Lurk. Welcome. Uh, we request that all cell phones <clears throat> be turned off, uh, particularly tomorrow during the World Cup. <clears throat> to avoid uh, any disruption. Um, topics presented at ACIP meetings uh, include open discussion with, with time reserved for public comment at the end of each day. Um, and uh, hopefully the comments will pertain to the topics that have been presented. Uh, time for public comments also may be provided prior to specific votes by ACIP uh, to ensure that these comments uh, are considered by the committee uh, before the vote is taken. And, and, and John can, uh, will handle that. Uh, people who plan to make comments should visit the registration table at the uh, far corner of the room, uh, provide your name, uh, organization, uh, and any conflicts if applicable, and then um, uh, public comments can be given. There are several initiatives that are underway um, in an attempt to improve and accelerate communication and information delivery from ACIP, and I'd just like to mention a couple of those. Number one is CDC has developed vaccine apps for the child, adolescent, catch-up, uh, and adult schedules uh, with the contraindication and precautions tables, which are really, really very nice, uh, downloadable. Uh, version 1.1 of the app is available in the App Store for iPhones and pads for Apple users, um, and there's an Android version that will be available very shortly. Um, this is the 50-year anniversary of ACIP, as John said, and we'll have more about that uh, at, this, at the October meeting. Uh, safety issues will continue to be presented as ACIP members have requested at every meeting and a separate vaccine safety presentation will be presented uh, this afternoon by the uh, vaccine safety folks. Uh, to summarize conflicts of interest provisions applicable to ACIP as noted in the ACIP policies and procedures uh, manual, members of the ACIP agree to forego participation in certain activities related to vaccines during their tenure on the committee. 
for certain other interests that potentially enhance the member's expertise while serving on the committee, uh, CDC has issued limited uh, conflict of interest waivers. Members who conduct vaccine clinical trials or who serve on data safety monitoring boards may present to the committee on matters related to those specific vaccines. However, they are prohibited from participating uh, in committee votes on those issues related to the vaccines. Regarding other vaccines of the affected company, a member may participate in discussions with a proviso that he or she abstains on all votes related to the vaccines of that company. It's important to note that, that at each ACIP meetings, uh, all ACIP members state uh, any conflicts of interest. Um, the next slide shows the application for uh, new membership, uh, applications for ACIP members for uh, uh, beginning in July of 2015 are due no later than November 14th, and more information is available on the ACIP website. So <clears throat> one last comment. Um, <clears throat> at every meeting, we provide an update on the status of ACIP recommendations. Uh, a list of recommendations that have been published um, is on the slide, and these are uh, published since the last ACIP meeting, and there are four. Uh, the schedule for people from birth through 18 years of age. Um, there's the adult immunization schedule. Um, a really excellent R and R and the prevention and control of Anopheles influenza disease, which is very applicable to the slides that John showed, and use of meninge ACWY crim vaccine in children two through uh, 30, 23 months of age. And again, on the ACA website, all the uh, ACIP vaccine recommendations are published in two forms. One is by specific uh, disease, uh, pertussis, influenza, and so on and also by uh, chronological order in which they are published. So there's two ways to access them. Um, the recommendations and immunization schedules can be downloaded from the uh, ACIP website, and the apps are now available. Um, ACIP is a policy that every three to five years, uh, each recommendation is reviewed and then either renewed, retired, or reaffirmed. Uh, recommendations for uh, HPV, for herpes zoster, for influenza, and for yellow fever are pending and will be published uh, hopefully before uh, the next meeting. With that, Dr. Tempe, it's all yours. Thank you. And so we'll uh, start out by asking for conflicts of interest around the table. I'll go ahead and start this time. Uh, Tempe, no conflict? Pellegrini, no conflicts? Ruben, no conflict? Harrison, no conflict? Vasquez, no conflict. Tamara Quinn Beasley, my university receives uh, funding for clinical trials for Merck Pharmaceuticals. Harriman, no conflict. Jenkins, no conflict. Bocchini, no conflict. <clears throat> Rheingold, no conflict. Duchin, no conflict. Karen, no conflict. Kappa Zalcalt, no conflict. <clears throat> 